Last couple of weeks, we've been in the book of Proverbs, in the Old Testament book of Proverbs. We're going to be there again this morning. If you want to open up your Bibles and turn to Proverbs 13, we're going to start there. Two weeks ago, we started this series, and we're talking about a road trip. Now, Dana and I love road trips. We would like to do that professionally. <laughs> Just drive down the road, listening to Hall & Oates, hitting great truck stops for hot tamales and, you know, roller taco type things at the, uh, you know, just eating junk food. We're just a few million dollars short of being able to do this full time. And so we've got a, we've got a couple of trips planned out for the, for the next few weeks. Danny gets out of school this week. Ha! And, and school's almost over, and she's a teacher, and so we look forward to summer every year, and we've got a couple of things out in front of us that we're, that we're ready for, we're, we're planning for. And as we look forward to summer and summer trips, summer road trips, it makes me think of all the road trips we took as kids. It makes me think of what we did when the boys were little. Uh, my family grew up, when I, was, when I was little, we lived in Northwest Ohio. We lived in Finley, Ohio. My mom's parents lived in Nashville. My dad's parents lived in Atlanta. And we would see my grandparents, each one of those grandparents, we would see them about twice a year. They'd come to us, and we'd go to them. And, and so there were road trips. And I knew, especially my, my Atlanta grandparents, I knew how many turns... It was from Finley, Ohio to Hamby Road in Marietta, Georgia. I knew how many turns and we would count it. Now, most of that day was I-75. You'd leave Finley, get on I-75, drive for a bunch of hours, and then you get off I-75 at some point. But I knew how many turns, and, and in my mind, I was counting down because I know that Grandma Cook has this thousand-year-old cupboard, and every little Debbie on the planet was in that cupboard, and she didn't watch like my parents would watch. And so they'd be occupied in the front room or they'd be off doing something and it was just there. And I had a 100% green light to hit that. I looked forward to those road trips. As, as we've gone through this series, as we've been looking in the book of Proverbs, it reminds us that our lives are a journey. Some great country singer said, life is a highway. Life is a trip. We are on a trip. The first two weeks, we've looked at it like this in Proverbs 13, 20. Life is better when we travel together. We are built for community. You're built to be with People. You can travel all along alone and be on your lonesome if you want to, but God has made us to need community. But you got to be careful who you let in the bus. Remember, we talked about that last week. Life is better when you've got the right people on the bus, but life can get hijacked very quickly when you get the wrong people on the bus. Proverbs 13, verse 20 says, walk with the wise, walk, do life with, travel with. Walk with the wise, and the wise here is those who have wisdom. They realize that points are connected. Choice A leads to consequence B. Some people don't know that. Proverbs calls those people fools. Don't be a fool. Walk with, do life with, travel with wise people. And what happens? You become wise. Their wisdom kind of has a way of rubbing off on you. If you surround yourself with the right people, you more often than not end up heading in a right direction. But, don't you hate that? But a companion of fools suffers harm. Testify. How many of you could tell stories? A companion of fools suffers harm. So, you're on a trip, 
Your life is a trip. You have a rear view mirror. You can see the past. You can see what's behind you, but you cannot go in reverse. You can't go back. I can't go back and be a high school senior again. I had awesome hair. <laughs> but I can't go back. I can't go back to May 1988. Good times. I can't go back and make those decisions again. I can look back, but I can't go back. The first two weeks of this series, we've looked at the, the fact that we shouldn't go alone. We should surround ourselves with people, with relationship, but don't pick up hitchhikers. Don't pick up strangers. Fools, the book of Proverbs says, and we have to realize that sometimes you have to slow down in our lives. We have to slow down and let some people out. God loves them, but they're not good for you right now. Which brings us to this morning. And a question I was going to ask everybody, and I'm going to ask it to you several times, but here's my question. Ready? 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 Deep, deep philosophy here. Where are you going? I know, like I should be sitting at the top of a mountain with my legs crossed. Right? Where are you going? It's a big question. But here's the deal. When, when we're on a trip, when we're on a journey, you get to pick your destination. Largely, where you end up in life, there's a lot of factors there, but you get to choose. And I ask you this morning, where do you want to go? Where are you going? Where do you say you're going this morning. If I were to ask the seniors, all these young, awesome seniors, Ashley, where are you going? Where are you going this fall? Yeah. yeah. She has a plan. Now, there's more to say about this, but she's got a plan. If I were to ask you, where are you going? What would you tell me? It's, it's, it's not just a question for 18-year-olds. If I were to ask you today, what would you, what would you say? Where are you going in this season of life? Married couples, where are you going? Young moms, young dads, where are you going? Where are you going at work? Where are you going in your walk with Jesus? Pick a place. Have a destination. Where are you going? When we left Finley, Ohio, and we pulled out of Hollybrook Drive, I knew how many turns it was to Hamby Road, Marietta, Georgia. I knew how many turns it was. I knew where we would stop. I knew the places. I knew that there was a Stucky's pecan log in my future. I knew that along I-75, there were about a 1,000 of them, and sooner or later, Dad would need gas, and we would stop, and I had 79 cents, and I would get a pecan log. Where are you going? We do that on road trips. Not many people take time off of work, take money out of the bank, pack up the suitcases, load up the car, get out on the highway, then just aimlessly drive. Now, people used to call that taking a Sunday drive. Anybody ever take a Sunday drive? Just go out and just kind of drive around? All right. How was Mayberry? Uh, awesome. Okay. We, we don't do that a whole lot today. We do things on purpose, and we, we, we have a destination, and we know when we're leaving. We know when we're going to get there. We know what we're going to do when we get there. But some people just drive. Now, that's awesome. If that's you today, and you're just kind of going... The book of Proverbs has something to say about that, too. So turn to Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21, and I just want you to read the first part of this verse. Don't read it the second part. We'll get there. But the first part of this verse, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5, the plans of the diligent lead to profit. The plans, plan, 
Big word. The plans of the diligent lead to profit. The New Living Translation puts it like this. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. Put that, uh, put that picture up, that destination's picture. Okay, we've looked at this last couple of weeks. Your life is the green line, and from the time you were born until today, your life has traveled a particular route. You can't go back in any of those black lines. You can't go back and do it again. I hate to tell this to you, but you can't live your 20s all over again. Ashley can. She's a puppy. She's got that out in front of her. But you all that are beyond that, you can't go back and do that. You can't go back to a point and then take a different route. You're stuck where you are today. Now, the good, that's the bad news. The good news is you can decide today where you want to go. But it takes a plan. Proverbs 21 Five, the plans of the diligent lead to profit. Good planning and hard work leads to prosperity. You only get one life. You only get one. You only get that high school season once. You only get that young adult season once. You only get, man, I hate to even use this phrase, but a first marriage once. You only get your first job once. What are you going to do? You can't go back and relive those past mistakes. You might want to. You can look back in your rearview mirror, but you can't go back. Let's look at what, look at what uh, a for instance. Go to the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 7, and, and I'll, read, I'll speed read some of this. And I'll leave out some of it. But this is what some of this might look like. Now, the, uh, don't get hung up on the, parag- on the chapter title, okay? Because the chapter title says, Warning Against the Adulterous Woman. All right? Don't, don't get hung up on, on the adulterous woman part. Just, just listen to some of these words. Starting in verse 6. At the window of my house. Now remember, Solomon, a lot of the Proverbs comes from King Solomon. He's, he's giving out bits of advice to his son, his sons, and us. We get to listen in. And it's, he, he keeps imploring his son, listen to my counsel. Listen to my wisdom. I want to share what I know with you. Just please listen. So Proverbs 7 verse 6 says this. At the window of my house, I look down through the window, through the lattice. And I saw among the simple, I noticed among the young men a youth who had no sense. Know anybody like that? I saw among all the youngsters out on the street a youth who had no sense. He was going down the street near her corner walking along in the direction of her house. dum de dum de dum <laughs> He's just out for a Sunday drive. He's just walking. No plan, no destination. He's just out. At twilight, as the day was fading, as the dark of night set in, then out came a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute with crafty intent. If she'd have had a mustache, she'd have twisted it. <laughs> okay? So just picture this is temptation. This is idleness. This is just out for a drive. I'm just out to have a good time. I've got no plan. I've got no schedule. I'm just driving. See, when my family left Finley, Ohio, and we were headed to Marietta, Georgia, I knew where we were going. I knew the directions we were going. I knew the roads we were going to be on. Or you can just go out and just start driving. Then out came a woman to meet him. Go down to verse 13. She took hold of him and kissed him with a brazen face, said, now this is just kind of religious gobbledygook here. 
Today I fulfilled my vows. I have food from my fellowship offering at home. So I came out to meet you and I looked for you and I found you. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloe and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply of love till morning. Let's our, enjoy ourselves with love. And we, from the window up above, looking down on this moron, we think, don't go! Dude! I think so many passages in Scripture start with dude. They leave it out most of the time. But dude, don't go! Don't follow her! Now you can insert any temptation, idleness, moronic decision here, but the picture here is that Solomon, the father, the wise, is looking down on a simple youth just out wandering with no direction. And I ask you, where are you going? Where is it that you say you want to go? Because there's a difference. And I'll illustrate it here with Ashley again. I ask Ashley, Ashley, where are you going? She says, Trevecca, I'm going to go to Trevecca in the fall. I'm going to start classes. I'm going to prepare for ministry. I'm going to, I'm going to learn worship ministry. I'm going to take classes. They're going to teach me this, and they're going to teach me that, and they're going to teach me this. That's a plan. That's a, I have a destination. That's a, where are you going? And there's an answer, but I'll ask you a bit of a different way. Where are you really going? Where are the steps you are taking today actually taking you? And that's a different question. Where are you going? If you'd ask me, when I graduated high school, Rich, where are you going? I'm not sure I would have had as good of an answer. I knew where I was going to end up in the fall. But if you said, Rich, what are you planning to be? It might have ended up being almost anything from, I'm going to be a major league pitcher. Should have played high school baseball before I got to the major leagues. But, or I'm going to be a astronaut or U.S. senator or firefighter or policeman or soldier or whatever. I, I, could, I could have given you any answer. Rich, where are you going? I'm doing this. But then the different question is, Rich, the steps you're taking today, where are they taking you? That's a completely different question. You got that dog picture? Throw the dog picture up there. The wolf. Maybe I'll get some food at that campfire. What's the worst that could happen 10,000 years later? What's the worst that could happen? I think I'll go down this road. Proverbs 7 says, A simple youth just is wandering down the sidewalk toward temptation, toward the wrong side of town, toward destruction. And the wise up in the window is going, no, don't go there. I'll ask you again, where are you headed? Go back to Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21, I gave you the first part of that verse. Proverbs 21, the plans of the diligent lead to profit. But that verse goes on. As surely as haste leads to poverty. The New Living Translation says it like this. Good planning and hard work leads to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts leads to poverty. Have a plan. If you wander, if you just are cruising, the days just keep rolling by. I am 52 and a half years old, and I look back and I think, where did my 20s go? Where did my 30s go? Do you remember when Prince came out with 1999, Tonight We're Gonna Party Like It's? I, re I remember listening to that song in the 80s thinking, man, in 1999, I'm going to be almost 30 years old. And I remember thinking, how old is that? 
And now, on the north side of that, I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great to be almost 30 years old? Where did my 30s go? Dana and I, young in, 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 in marriage, young in parenthood, young in ministry, we were youth pastors for, uh, do the math, eight years. It was great. Where did those kids go? Where did, where, did, where did young Rich and Dana go with my wind pants and my T-shirt tucked in? Where did that go? Where did that guy who could stay up all night, where did that guy go? Now it's like 9.15 and I'm looking for bed. Where did that guy go? The days just keep on rolling. And if we're not headed someplace on purpose... You drift. So this is actually, this, this wasn't really by design, but this is actually a perfect message for our high school seniors today. To say, God's word has some wisdom here. What is your destination? Where are you headed? And are you going there on purpose? I'll ask again. Where are you going? Is where you are today, are the steps you're taking, are they actually taking you where you say you want to go? Someday I want to be out of debt. Someday I want to get my degree. Someday I want to meet a good Christian girl, Christian guy. Someday I want to lose a few pounds so I have more than one pair of pants I can fit into. Someday I want to do A, B, C, D. Really? Really? You say that. But are the steps that you're taking today going to actually get you to where you say you want to go? Andy, Andy Stanley says it like this, and I love this thought. Discipline, not Desire, sorry, direction, not intention, determines your destination. Direction, not intention, determines your destination. Let me illustrate this. You can plan to go to Florida. You can plan to go to Florida. You can save up for a year to go on vacation in Florida. You can go to Target and buy that SPF 50 because you are a pasty, pasty boy and you are going to sunburn if you don't put that on. You can buy an old man hat with a big old floppy brim. You can get a new swimsuit. You can plan. You can even get in the car. You can pack your bags and get in the car with your wife, Dana, and you can be real spiritual. You can say, let's pray before we go. Dear Lord, be with us as we go on our way to Florida. Keep us safe and give us a great week together. And then you can go out on I-24 and head west. And do you know where you're going? (laughs) Kentucky. (laughs) You can plan for Florida. You can intend to go to Florida. You can pray, God, get us to Florida. But when you get out on I-24 and you head west, you're not going to Florida. Where are you going? Largely, you get to choose from here. You can't go back. You can't be a high school grad again. You can't go back. You can't do your 20s again. You can't go back. And live those early days in, in your marriage, in your family again. You can't go back. You can look back and look and find some lessons. But where are you going today? And asking the same questions, where are you going? The steps you're taking today. Steve Harvey, you guys know Steve Harvey? Steve Harvey says it like this. Discipline, not desire, determines our destiny. Discipline. Taking disciplined steps. Where am I going? I'll leave you with one tip. This is free. Ready? Somebody's got a map to where you say you want to go. Somebody's got a map. Somebody's been there before. Somebody's been where you say you want to go. And probably they'll tell you the best way to get there. Probably... They'll tell you what to do along the way. Somebody, your destination, you want a great marriage. Somebody 
is there and is willing to talk to you. You want to get closer to Christ. Somebody that you know has a closer walk with Jesus than you have right now, and they will share with you. Somebody has been in debt up to their eyeballs, and they got out. Somebody has a map because they've been there before. You guys know what Cedar Point is? Cedar Point is roller coaster paradise. Lots of amusement parks have roller coasters. Cedar Point, like, adds nine new roller coasters every year. I don't think Ohioans pay any tax money that doesn't go to build, uh, except to build more roller coasters at Cedar Point. And it's been since 1985 that I've been to Cedar Point. Joe and Marla have been to Cedar Point since I've been to Cedar Point. And if I was going to go to Cedar Point, you know what I would do? Joe, let me buy you a cup of coffee. And I want your map. Because without his map, you know what I'd do? I'd go to Cedar Point. I would take all the wrong turns. And at the end of the day, I would have ridden one roller coaster. I would have got stuck on the carousel. I would have had a soft pretzel. And I would have gone, where did my day go? But with my good buddy Joe's map in my pocket, he'll say, all right, son, sit down. Let me tell you what to do first. Somebody's got a map to where you say you want to go. Where are you going? We're all on this trip. You're at the steering wheel, largely. You're at the steering wheel. Where do you say you're wanting to go? Where are your present steps taking you? Do those two match up? Where you say you want to go and where your steps are actually taking direction, not intention, determines your destination. Somebody's been there before. Somebody's got a map to where you're going. The business term for that is mentor. The biblical word for that is rabbi. See, there are lots of destinations to go in this world, and I've just preached to you for 25 minutes, and I'm going to now Jesus juke the entire thing and say the destination isn't necessarily a career. It's not necessarily a final point on the, on the map. It's a closer walk with Jesus. And the Holy Spirit helps us get there. Now, it could very well be that you want to be a worship leader. It could very well be that you want to be a lawmaker. It could very well be that you want to be a banker or an investment person or a chemical engineer. It could very well be that you want those things and God has given you those desires and you have a next step. Next, I'm going to go to school. Next, I'm going to get an internship. I'm going to get an entry-level position. And you say that's where you want to go. God goes with you. Somebody's been there before and will help you if you want a closer walk with Jesus today if that's the destination what is your destination if that's a destination we have one that will teach us he's been this road before and he's willing to share with us what he knows if you want to know Jesus book of Proverbs says walk with the wise and become wise Surround yourself with people who share your values and surround yourself with people who say they're headed in the direction that you say you want to go. And every once in a while, slow down and ask yourself, are the steps I'm taking today actually getting me closer to where I say I want to go? The good news is this. You have one that wants to help you. But he doesn't make those decisions for us. We've got to follow him. We're going to close in prayer. If you'd stand up with me. We're going to sing. We're going to pray together. But I'll ask you one more time. Where do you want to go? You are here. This is today. And where you go from here, whether that's with your finances, whether that's with your physical body, whether that's in your relationships, whether you are 18 years old and you're on the cusp of military career or profession or school, wherever you are now, you probably have a place that you say you want to go. 
Are your steps today, tomorrow, are your steps right now getting you closer to that? And if you don't know how to get there, have a little humility and ask for wisdom. Somebody's been there, and they're more than likely willing to help you, unless you're the person who knows everything. Please come talk to me after church. You're not the person who knows everything. But we have a God who wants good things for our life. He really does. And he's willing to walk with us. And he's given me many desires of my heart. And there are some that I haven't realized yet. But he's guiding me closer to himself. And when I know him, the actual destinations on my map begin to be a little bit less important because he's drawing me closer to himself. Would you bow your, health, your, your, your heads with me? Let's, let's pray together. God, would you help us and guide our steps? Your word, is, your word is pretty plain that there are roads that you want for us and that there are roads that you warn us against. And there are relationships and wise people and mentors and those that might disciple us and guide us. There are people who will help us get where we say we want to go. And God, if we'll have some wisdom and if we'll have some humility and if we'll be deliberate, our discipline can determine our destiny and you can guide us. But we really can go off base we really can go off the road. We can just drive. We can just wander. And we can end up places that we think, how did I get here? How did I get in so much debt? How did I flunk out of school? How did I end up in this addiction? We can stop. We can get hit like a truck. We can come to a point where we say, how did my life end up here? That's not what you want for us. But God, wherever we find ourselves today, there is a path forward. Help our spirit to want what your spirit wants in us. Guide our steps and help us to listen to you. Lord, guide us and help us because we need you. In your name we pray, amen.